Hey everyone, the name is like Eric Thor and pfft, excuse me for not making any videos. I'm sorry, I've been away. I know, I know, I love making videos. I've just been so fascinated with this new theory. I've gone so deep into this theory that I've been kind of unable to make videos. Yes, during the course of last week I went full hermit, I let my beard grow far and wide, and uh, now I'm back, shaved, and yeah, tomorrow I will go cut my hair. Yeah, the thing is, when you go into that learning mode, and when you go the deepest into that learning mode, you kind of lose the ability to talk for a second, because you're so interested in just going deeper, making sure everything is right, making sure you figure it out. And so I've spent my days, and um, this might uh, look very weird or sound very weird to you, but looking at all kinds of people and trying to understand the emotional drives and emotional motivations of others, I've been investigating the connections between a person's cognitive functions and their emotional functions. A person's cognitive functions, as in how we think, and the emotional functions as in the emotional fixations underlying personality type. I have looked at the intersection between personality type as in flow type and subtype as in your developed type and the Enneagram. I have been look, studying and trying to mesh these things together and I'm still meshing, I'm still processing and uh, my ideal is a truly integrated holistic system connecting emotional drives with cognitive functions. And today's video is all about that. It's about that unified theory and the process there. And I will tell you uh, what I did. I started with the nine base Enneagram types and I worked very hard to be authentic in how I portray these types. I wanted to be uh, honest and I wanted to be uh, humble with how the system has currently used these definitions and I wanted to use them in a way that retained their original definition as much as possible. But then I started building on that and I took the three instincts mapped out in Enneagram and I made them an essential part of the base system so that the instincts as uh, responding to fear and survival uh, are become a part of the emotional system of anxiety, shame, and anger in the Enneagram, causing four quadras, not three. I then, building on that, ended up adding four new Enneagram types. Four new Enneagram types that I saw were fit if I wanted to mesh and study the emotional drives underlying the cognitive functions. Then I connected what cognitive functions I thought were most related to which emotional fixations. And I will tell you here, I don't think that an INFJ flow type necessarily has all of these emotional fixations. That's why I have the subtype system. When I know if you are a red INFJ, a blue INFJ, a green INFJ, or a yellow INFJ, then I know which emotional fixations are the most likely to drive you as an INFJ. And an INFJ's four base emotional fixations, their most healthy emotional fixations, are first, the fixation with doing something good for others, the helper, the Enneagram 2 fixation. Second, it is the fixation of being a wanderer. A sexual type, moving from place to place, discovering new things. A person with wanderlust. Then, as the third fixation, the INFJ has the fixation to be on their own. The INFJ has difficulties building attachments to others and tends to be fixated with the idea, with the emotions that make them pull away from others into themselves, into their own world, as self-preservative types. Sorry, as antisocial types. Finally, the INFJ has the emotional, fi emotional fixation of an Enneagram 4 type, the artist, the bohem, 
that doesn't care about what other people think, that doesn't care about how other people see them, that doesn't care about how they look or what other people think about them, but that instead fixates on the underlying essence of humanity and what drives humans and what drives people to be the way they are. Now, as an INFJ, you might say that I am none of these types. I am neither a sexual INFJ, neither an antisocial INFJ, neither a four or a two. And that's okay. That's actually quite synchronistic with the Enneagram system. The Enneagram system maps out, of course, 12 additional emotional fixations beyond the four I just mentioned. And um, all of them are possible for you as an INFJ. As an INFJ, you might have a particularly strong fixation towards the nine, which is related to adapting to and going with the flow and mediating and balancing human interests. Or perhaps you have a strong fixation towards the five, which has a withdrawn response to anxiety, a desire to think and plan ahead, to think things through, to wait. Perhaps you have a strong desire as an INFJ towards being the societal ideal, to being appreciated by others, to being liked by others. And that's not uncommon if you are an INFJ in the green subtype. Green INFJs are, of course, more fixated with power. Yellow INFJs are more fixated on love and being loved. Red INFJs are more fixated on the thought of doing something brave or original. Blue INFJs are the most fixated on knowledge, mastery and excellence. The four new Enneagram paths that I mapped out was in order first the Enneagram 10 type, the anti-1. The anti-1 is the description of the person inclined towards going with the flow. This is the hippie, the epitome of the hippie. The person who does whatever feels right, that believes there is no right or wrong way to do anything, that there is no inherently good or bad way to do anything, that everyone just does things differently. The Enneagram 2 has a contrasting type as well, the Enneagram 11. The Enneagram 11 is in many ways the anti-2, in the essence of being a person that, instead of being concerned with doing what other people want, is concerned with being their own person, of doing what they do, what they want, regardless of what other people think of uh, practicing independence and self-sufficiency. The anti-two, where the two struggles with being possessively caring and sometimes smothering in their care for others. The anti-two is represented by, in many ways, uh, having a low regard for what other people think and for sometimes being a little self-centered and egocentric. Now, Finally, the six has a counter attitude as well. The anti six or the Enneagram 12 type. And the Enneagram 12 type is the representative of someone who is inclined to believe in and to trust other people. Where the Enneagram six doubts what other people say and if other people are being correct and works hard to maintain an aura of security and safety around themselves and other people. The Enneagram 12 has no regard for their own safety in that sense, but trusts blindly in others and enters into and does things with other people without worrying about being manipulated or controlled. While the Enneagram 12 has an often soothing aura to be around, they also do very little to make other people feel secure. They make other people feel like the 12 can't be relied upon and that the 12 can't sort out their own deal, and that the 12s tend to become overly reliant on other people. And now the final type, the antisocial type, marks the person that has 
a low need to be around other people. This uh, Luke from Gilmore Girls or this uh, independent spirit that prefers their own company, feels sometimes nervous or f uh, scared around other people, feels the most safe when they are in their own company and uh, therefore sometimes struggles to uh, get close to others as they are always feeling this urge to pull away. This avoidant attachment style, this antisocial type is inclined towards being a hermit, but be sure this type is by no means less inclined towards having healthy relationships than the other types. The antisocial type has their struggles with relating and bonding, and that is getting close to others, where the social type has their issues with getting close to and attaching themselves to others, in that they uh, say too much too early, or that they get too close, and that they jump between people and struggle to settle down with one person. Sorry, some of that is more true to the sexual type, actually. Anyways, I stay dedicated towards completing and finally settling down on a full comprehensive system on how type and emotions and subtypes are interrelated. That's my core goal right now. And uh, if you have any thoughts or questions on this subject, feel free to join us on Discord. Feel free to write in the comments field down below. Let's create a good discussion about how the Enneagram should be used, how the personality type should be used, and how they intersect. And also, if you haven't already, take the Enneagram test I made for a spin. I'm sure you'll like it. It's actually shown to be pretty accurate, to be pretty reliable in pinning down people's Enneagram types. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.